Hey guys, welcome back to Sharon's Nail Boutique. I am your wonderful host, Sharon. Yes, don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell if you're new here. Welcome back to another hashtag before and after edition, guys. Here is the before, obviously. Here is the after, obviously. So we're just gonna start off by prepping all the nails. We're gonna be, you know, taking down this old set. All her, she came back with all her nails still on. I was so, so proud of her. This is my client that always gets the stiletto. I got her to change her mind to a long ballerina coffin last time. And she loves this shape so much better, guys. She's like so in love with this shape. She loves the way it looks on her and she just really, really likes it. So I go in, I push back all 10 cuticles and I'm going in now, not to mention I spray with 70% alcohol to disinfect. And I'm going in now with my cuticle ball diamond bit. And this is so, so gentle, guys. This is the only time you should ever go in with a bit on the natural nail plate. This is the only bit you should use on the natural nail. Now I'm going in with my Volcano bit in a fine grit. I get these from Ally Express. As always, I will leave the links for these in the description index below, guys. So let me just say this. I wanna apologize ahead of time for some reason. I don't know if it's because I didn't use my flash when I was recording, cause I had other lights up in my room. However, when I started using the colored acrylic on this set, you can see, I don't know if it has anything to do with the Kind Master app or what, because on my regular video, it doesn't look like that. It looks completely fine. For some reason, when I start laying this gold acrylic, this burnt orange kind of gold acrylic, it starts doing funny black lines. And anytime I use a yellow color on here, that always happens for the most part. I can't figure out what it is. If any of you guys know why my editing app is doing that to the yellowish colors on here, can you please let me know so I can fix it? Because I can only imagine how you guys feel about watching it like that. But I wanted to really get this video up for you guys because I basically did it from start to finish. Um, I did not leave the top coating in this because I really just wanted to focus on the actual design of it. I wanted to show you guys because I actually meant this set to be an ombre Chanel foil set. However, we had to improvise at the last possible moment because when I went in with the Burano foil glue, gel glue, it didn't really work. And I don't know why that is. If anybody has any pointers or um, advice on how I can do that better next time. Also, when I went to go ombre over the top of it, when I was sort of happy of how much foil I had on there, because I had to go in a couple times and restick it, when I went to go ombre over the top of it, it started pulling the color right off. So the monomer basically acts like acetone and just removes any ink or color or anything and i'll show you that in a second but basically what you see me doing now is i'm going in with my nail sunshine boomerang files these are my hand files this is what you use to remove the shine on the nail plate etch the growth and etch that um grow out back into it, a natural looking state to where you can't see that harsh line when you come back in with your acrylic you see how crisp i'm making these sidewalls and the free edge you want to always be holding your nail file at certain degree angles and your files need to be straight they need to be flat otherwise you're not going to get a good angle if you have a file that's like messed up and bent and stuff like that you're not going to get nice sharp crisp lines it's just it's just the way it is guys so if you're looking for good hand files i would suggest to getting the metal board ones where you can peel and stick um, I got these because it's easier, I feel like, to just give everyone their own hand file. And then if I want to use my metal board ones, I can remove the sticker and just keep going in with a new one. Um, so now I'm going in with my OPI Bond Aid. I do one coat on all 10 nail plates just to grow out, not on the, the artificial nail. And then I'll go in with two coats of my acid base no lift nails acid base primer so I go in with a first coat and then I'll do the second coat right before 
my thin clear base of Mia Secret Clear Acrylic Polymer. And you wanna wait, so any anybody I give advice to about using this product in particular, you wanna wait till the nail plate is like chalky looking before you lay your acrylic. So while it's like dry, with mm -hmm. acid list, like a Mia Secret acid list or Young Nails acid list primer, you would go in with your acrylic while it's still damp looking. So that's the difference, that's the big difference, guys, between acid base and acid list, okay? That's very important because if you wanna get, you know, the issues with your lifting down packed, you wanna pay attention to that because it's super important. If you're not using your primer properly, it's not gonna work properly. Now, personally, I was never a big fan of Mia Secret primer. So, now this is the part, I'm doing this honey, acrylic this is one of my own homemade acrylics this is like i call it honey because it looks like honey but this is the color that i use to go underneath the foils and i did it on this ring finger on the left hand and the points are on the right hand now i obviously i waited till it was dry before i went in with my foil glue and stuff but for some reason it just the foil just did not want to cooperate it did not want to stick so you know we had to deal with that but I'll show you more of what I'm talking about as we go along and again please excuse when you start to see the yellow acrylic and all them funny black looking lines I promise you that is not part of the video it's something wonky going on with my editing software I'm so, so sorry about it, guys. Like, this is not how I <laughs> want to be represented. Um, so, hopefully, it's not too bothersome. But, yeah, if it is, guys, just, yeah, let me know how you feel about it, obviously. Because I don't want you guys to feel like you can't tell me exactly how you feel. As long as it's constructive and it's not, like, downright disgustingly rude, I am all ears, guys. I am totally one of those people that can accept constructive criticism because I feel it helps me get better, you know? I, and I want to bring you guys better content. That's the ultimate goal here. So, again, going in and just kind of paying attention to those side walls. So, basically, I'll wait for, like, my bead of acrylic to polymize ever so slightly and then what I'll do is I'll clean my brush really good. I'll go back into my liquid a little bit and I'll start kind of, you know, pulling from those sides, making sure that my side walls are not only tapered and thin, but they don't look like just like a block, like you just wiped off the side of a box. Like you want to make sure that the sides are, you see how I'm doing that? Kind of pulling, walking it down, going over those sides with my angle, my brush at an angle. That's going to keep those side walls nice and smooth tapered but without looking like you like cut off the edges you know what I mean that's the big difference there so this is another one of the honey nails that I was doing you see how it's doing like that black now this is that's what I'm talking about I don't understand like why it's doing that it's so weird so please just um excuse that guys I have no idea like why that's happening okay so this is my gold and this is my gold like burnt orange acrylic so you see how I walk that product down once I blend it and kind of turn my brush around and blend backwards so there's not that harsh line when you come in ombre over the top you don't need a lot of product here because you're gonna come in and encapsulate okay Obviously, you want to encapsulate on your ombres because you work hard on achieving that design. You don't want to ruin it by, you know, having such a super harsh line there. And you see how I come from the sides and pull it in. Like, ah, that, that black spot stuff is really bothering me so much. Oh, my God. I hate that. It's like you can't really even tell what I'm... Uh, I hate this. Let me see if I could try and fix it, guys, a little bit. Okay, it seems like my phone is just wants to have a mind of its own, guys. Let me just say I am extremely, and I know I've already apologized for this, I am extremely sorry about this, whatever this is. I have no 
freaking clue why it's doing this. Anyone has any advice for me on this, please, please let me know in the comments below. Just pay attention, I guess, to how I am pulling my product, not so much the black specks inside of my gold burnt orange acrylic. <laughs> Oh gosh, you know, if it ain't one thing, it's another. Just when I get back to, you know, the angle that people want to see and like, now I'm having trouble with this. So I kept in mind just doing nails. Yes, mama, I kept you in mind when you told me that you liked, you know, seeing over the top and looking down at the nails. So I was thinking of you when I did this angle and yeah, so I, I am thoroughly sorry about these specs in the video huh and i know that it's probably like damn i really want to see like how smooth that color is without looking at these glitches and whatever those are so just keep um an eye on how i'm pulling that product back in onto the top of the nail that's really important guys because you want the thickness to be the same all the way through obviously not where it's blended you want that to be thin so you don't have that harsh line but coming down and walking the product down the nail you want to make sure that on both sides of the sidewalls that it's coming down evenly and correctly so i'm just adding a little more color to that top there just a little kind of see-through and then we'll move on so i'm just adding a little more honey acrylic to this one you see it doesn't do it with this acrylic and I don't know, maybe it's because of how pigmented that color is. Not sure. Um, another ombre on the thumb here, guys. So we're going in with that burnt orange again. You see, I don't understand. It has to have something to do with the color because this only happens when I'm using my gold, like goldish acrylics. And this is more of like a burnt amber gold. My client, she really wanted something like a burnt orange. For fall you know so this was like the closest that I had I was gonna use mango tango from glam and glitz color blend collection but she didn't want to use that one because it was too orangey I feel like this was a good really really good alternative and she loved how they came out I promise you the final look does not have all black speckles in it <laughs> So just the same same way on each of these guys. Notice how I place that and then I gently kind of feather that back a little bit and you see how I'm going to the sides as they're kind of, you know, I have it on a downward angle so it's naturally coming down the nail. That helps you and also as it's polymizing, you wanna be coming down evenly on both of those sides, okay? See how I'm doing that? each time you're gonna get that nice even look you know because you're what you do to one side you do to the other period so again watch how I place it I push it up to where I want that section to blend kind of feather that back ever so slightly and then I'll come to my side walls where it's kind of trying to fall over that edge a little bit and I'll start kind of walking it down, but also pulling it in. Because you want most of that product to be coming through the center. If you are missing some pieces, like just like you see me kind of pushing it over gently with my brush. And I'll just keep, you know, doing the same on each of the nails until we get to our nude where we have to place it at the cuticle and bring it down. And I'm going to show you how I place that too. Let's hope that... You know, it's not going to do the same thing to that color. Gee whiz. I mean, I don't get it. I really don't. And I even tried, like, playing with the color and stuff like that. Like, the saturation, stuff like that. So, I really don't know what's going on with this freaking app. Like, seriously. Okay, so the pointer, we're just doing the same thing again, guys. The pointer and the thumb. We're going to blend that back. And then we're going to walk the rest of the product that's polymized kind of wet that so it's not too dry and we're going to start walking that product down see that now if it's too wet and you're having an issue with it just wait till it polymizes a little bit more 
you see how I'm doing that? I'm just kind of playing with it, getting it nice and even, playing with it, going to the sides, making sure that it's even all the way through. You get used to this type of stuff. Like, the more you practice, the more you will get a grip on how to do it. You know, because acrylic, once you get, like, the swing of things, it's like riding a bike. You don't forget, you know what I mean? And it's literally a math equation. If you look at doing nails like a math equation, every time they'll be perfect. Because you have to imagine that vertical line down the center. What one side has, the other should have. They should mirror each other, no matter what. So think of it that way, but also think of it like you know, you're building, you have like a, a, a piece of paper and they tell you build a 3D model of a circular dome, right? You're going to start off with bigger materials at the bottom, a wider shape, and then as you come up, it gets smaller and more narrow. This is how you have to look at like building your nail because on the sides, right? You want them narrow, tapered, right? You want most of the product coming through the center. So it's really about, it's all about the angles of which you're holding your brush on. So this is the part I wanted to keep in guys, pay close attention because I put the, the foil nail glue on there, the Burano foil nail glue. Now watch what happens. Like I'm using my Chanel foil. I'm so excited to do these ombre foil nails. My first time doing them. Like I, there should have been no reason why this didn't work. I have no freaking clue what the hell happened here. Like I was really excited to get this going and look, boom, nothing. Didn't even freaking come off all the way. I mean, mostly yes, but you know what I mean, guys. Like, th this this is just ridiculous. Like, I shouldn't have to come back in multiple times and do this. Like, I realized when I first got the kit, I did um, notice that I would probably have to do this. But at the same time, it's like, okay, once I use it, it should be working. And I should be able to ombre over it. But look, I just basically took my spray acetone and cleaned it off because it just was not working and I just went in look I try on this one too watch what I do so basically I'm basically like okay let's try it again on a different finger okay let's see if I try this silicone tool and help rub it on there if it'll make a difference right so I, I start doing that I notice yes it, it does already seem to help a little bit more okay like it seems to really be helping me a lot more than just my finger. So, okay, I'm like, okay, this is going good. I notice like the foil's coming off. Okay, this is gonna work for me. <laughs> I'm like so excitable at this point. I'm like, yay, it's working, yay. And then I come in with my nude and my color starts to come off and I'm just like, no, no. <laughs> so like even like with this like I should not have to come back in and do all this like th that's just too much I mean seriously the whole point of foil glue or foil gel glue I thought it was like supposed to be better for this I should have just used my freaking uh foil glue that I've it's kind of like an Elmer's one like, maybe I just should have used that. At least it air dries. I don't have to worry about it, like, being a gel. So, basically, I'm like, you know what? This is good. Let me go in with my nude and come over the top of this. And it's going to be super dope. Like, I was so excited about it. And I just, when I realized I this was not going to work, I was so upset. Not so upset, but I was, I was let down. Like, I was excited about doing this design. And I ordered these foils specifically for this design because I've seen it done so I'm not sure like what happened like what I should have done different maybe I don't know I, I'm not sure but I place my bead now you see how I'm, I'm pulling it down right and now like you notice how when my brush touched right there the color started to come off yeah that's what I mean 
and then I'm like, you know, maybe it's just me seeing things, so I, I go in again with another beat. And I'm like, okay. And I'm like, that's clearly not working. Now you see how I'm trying to brush that and feather it? And it, see, it just started coming off. And I'm just like, fuck this. I am so done at this point. <laughs> so I started like cleaning off the black, the brown parts and like kind of get it, trying to get it like erased for the most part. So what I ended up doing was I came in with this burnt orangey auburn holographic multi-mix that I have from years ago. And I basically, what I did with these design nails is I went in with that glitter, I faded it up, you know, instead of doing, it, it was basically a save at this point. Like, I had to figure something out that would not make me totally have to remove the whole entire nail. Just something that would look good with the rest of the set. And it was this, it was the glitter and she loved it. Honestly, I feel like, it really, really came out nice. And I, you cannot tell if I didn't obviously tell you that or show you that this was a mistake and it wasn't purposely done, you probably wouldn't know. I mean, granted, you can see a little bit of a dark patch underneath the nude. That could just be chalked up to an old design. You know what I mean? So I'm basically doing the same thing over here, but because I don't have the nude over here, it's a little bit easier for me. So I'm basically just going in covering that honey acrylic color with my glitter now at this point and my auburn like burnt orange hue multi-mix glitter hexes and basically just faded that up and we'll come in and do the ombre over the top so i feel like it was a great save and it really really went well with the other color and I can't complain. I really feel like these came out amazing. They And she loved them. Loved them so much. She's, she loves them, I should say. Because we're in the present, not past tense. So, yep. Just fixing that real quick. And now we're going to go in with our nude, guys. Yes. I'm actually excited. I seen a set that Nailed by Lucy did. It's like this, oh my god. She made this teal color using the chalks. Like the pastel chalks. I'm going to buy some of those pastel chalks and make some acrylics with you guys on tape. I'm going to order some of the containers and we're going to do a video like that, guys. If you want to see that video, say here, here in the comments, okay? If you want to see me mix colored acrylics with pastel chalks, say here, here. <laughs> oh, I'm like, I really want to do like a... I know uh, Regina Nails Be Fly, like, I asked her if she wanted to do a, a trade, like a glitter trade or nail art trade. If anyone is interested in that, let me know in the comments below. I would love to do a trade with someone. I got so many different nail things, like, it'd be really cool to see what other people have. So, yeah, if you guys are interested in that, let me know. So I think it'd be really cool. I don't see too many people doing like swaps or anything anymore. So it'd be nice, you know, just to have that kind of thing going again with women that just kind of, you know, they give things to each other, like things that we may not have. Like I may have something that you don't have and you may have something that I don't have. And that's basically the way it works. So yeah, if anyone's interested, just let me know. I got tons of new glitters, tons of acrylics, tons of nail art stickers foils all types of things guys so and remember we got the giveaway at a thousand subscribers so let's share 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 this content guys if you will if you're new here and you have not subscribed yet please do so it would mean the most to me and i always subscribe back to all my new subscribers all my subscribers that are subscribed to me you will find me in your subscription list i promise you that and if I'm not, it's because I don't know you're subscribed yet. And I will once I figure it out. So that's how I show my love. I'm one of those people that does not like 
believe in like I remember when I first started on YouTube and I would go to bigger people's channels and ask them please subscribe show me love they don't even read your comment for the most part or respond to it basically it's like once people get to a certain growth they stop talking to their subscribers for some reason for the most part and I you know maybe it's because they don't have time but at the same time it's like your subscribers is what makes you who you are I'm doing YouTube for you guys, not for myself, because I can be doing all this without recording it, you know what I mean? So the mere fact that people don't show love back to their subscribers, that has always bothered me. Like, you'll always hear people say, oh, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. But then when they want you to subscribe to them, you don't. So I'm not one of those people. So moving on from that rant. <laughs> I'm just going in now and doing the ombre part, guys. And if you're watching, sorry, I'm a little out of shot right here. Just pushing that up to the cuticle and I pull down. Just to make that the same type of... If you notice, when I do my ombres, I like to place... Let me just get that out of here. Okay, I apologize about that, guys. So, moving on... Sorry about being out of frame there. So I place my bead, I push up as far as I can without touching, and then I start pulling down. And I'll come to each side, make sure that it is tucked in and coming down tapered on those side walls. See what I'm doing there? So I'm gonna add a little more to this other side because it needed it. It was not even all the way through, and that's what I mean when I tell you guys that. To keep an eye on the thickness all the way through so that it's even. And I'm really glad that you guys are really enjoying these newer videos and finding them very helpful and informative. That really means a lot to me, guys, that you are finding these videos helpful. This is why I do it. Um, so, yeah. Anybody that wants to do a collaboration or, uh, yeah, anything like that. I love chatting it up with you guys and being a part of your guys's lives and a part of this whole journey with you guys on youtube so let me know what you guys would be interested in seeing what you want to um maybe see in the next video what type of designs you'd like to see maybe you'd like to see me just vlog or just something different interesting i don't know let me know what you guys want to see from me um it definitely helps and this is all about you guys i want to entertain you guys so I know the nails, I was actually thinking about maybe doing another channel, like, of basically my life and what I do on a daily basis and, um, kind of just what I go through on a daily, um, I think my life is definitely interesting. I come from a very interesting family and background and... I think a lot of people wouldn't expect certain things and they'd be surprised by certain things. So yeah, let me know if you guys would be interested in that. Maybe me vlogging or just other things throughout my life. So yep, just finishing up here with the blend and you see how I push it up, I go over, I turn my brush and just start blending down. It's best to do that. I feel like when you pull both sides down first, you don't get as good of a blend. I feel like when I go over, push it up, come down one side and keep pulling, and then fix my brush to the other side and pull down that wall, I feel like it's better when you do it that way. So now we're just moving on to the encapsulation, guys, and I like to really do these in a one bead method. I just feel like it's faster, it's better. And you get used to it over time, guys. I do add a little bit more right there because there was like a, a slight dip. So I come in here, I start like right under that cuticle and then I'll add a cuticle bead and then we'll move on. With the glitter nails, I like to kind of start right over the glitter first with like a wet bead and then I'll come in with the top bead if that makes any sense, just so I know that that acrylic seeps into all those cracks and crevices, you know? So, yes, and you should always encapsulate over your ombres because you want to protect those blends. I mean, more power to you. If you could get away with um, filing and stuff without ruining your ombre, I give you a lot of credit because it's not, like... 
obviously it's not a common thing and you want to make sure that that is protected because you just did so much work creating it you know so just doing the uh one bead method for the most part i feel like it's easier when i place my bead and i perfect the cuticle area really all i have to do is start walking that bead down the nail so you get used to it you get used to it over time and there's definitely when i do my nails on video this next time because i want to recreate that set by lucy with the teal and the gold and like the burnt orange colors i'm gonna show you guys how i place my beads of acrylic just so you can see you know powder to liquid ratio and so you can see bead placement size of bead like you want to be picking up certain size beads for different parts of the nail so i want to show you guys that and all those kinds of things so let me know if you'd be interested in seeing those things too this is pretty much it guys i love you guys all so much again once again if you're new here and you have not subscribed it would mean the world to me if you did so i will definitely subscribe back to your channel as well and let me know in the comments what you guys enjoyed about this video what what pointers you were able to pick up off this video and let me know um what you guys would be interested in seeing next yeah so once again too i apologize so much about that weird uh speckling thing going on um and if you have any advice in regards to that, let me know in the comments below. And I will leave the links for some of the products used here in the index cards below. So, alright guys, I love you all so much. All my continued subscribers, thank you so much for your love and support. And always showing me love on here. And I will see you guys next time on Sharon's Nail Boutique. Bye! Mwah.